Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Eric's Talk with, again, Zach on the channel. Uh, for the third time, actually, twice in a row here, last time we talked about our favorite films of 2016, so you can still watch that here. Um, but this time we're going to be talking about our top 10 anticipated films for 2017. So, Zach, how are you feeling about uh, this year shaping up on the whole? You know, looking back at our list from 2016, there were some disappointments oh, yeah. when we were starting the year. I feel pretty confident in my list. I'm looking at my list, and there aren't a lot that I think could end up bad. But we'll we'll see how it ends up. We'll see how it shakes up at the end of the year. Yeah, I actually don't feel super confident in my list, but we will. <laughs> but I had to make a list. Because I remember last year we made these lists, and I think perhaps three of my top ten anticipated films have made my top ten, and a lot of them turned out to be huge disappointments. You pointed out to me off camera, I forgot, number one was Suicide Squad, and that was a heaping pile of garbage for me. <laughs> like, you like that See, there were more than I do. Yeah, I did enjoy Suicide Squad. And that's being generous, like, you don't even super like it a lot. Like, it's passable. But... I agree. Hopefully, that doesn't happen with our, at least our top picks this year. So. I agree. All right, Zach, as last time, you can start it off again. Well, thank you very much, sir. My number 10 pick is what I'd like to call the wild card pick. Okay. This is the one movie I'm looking at my list that... ...is going to end up yours. <laughs> I watched the trailers, I saw the stills, I looked at this movie, and I thought, okay, it's Breakfast Club meets kind of like Iron Man, kind of like Chronicle. I'm going to give it a shot, because I look at what else is coming out this year. None of those thoughts crossed my mind when I saw the trailer, but I can, I can see that, I guess. Like it's, I'm not going to put Cars 3 at number 10. I'm not going to put Jumanji the remake there. So, Power Rangers. Yeah. Well, it's sort of funny that you mentioned you're not going to put a Pixar film in your top ten. This other one that I'm about to mention might be, but I thought about Coco in my anticipated film because I want Pixar to succeed and be awesome. However, they haven't been as awesome as they used to be, so I think in combination with me knowing literally nothing about that film, I just know its name, um, I kept it off my list. But my number 10 is actually something you literally just mentioned off camera. It is Murder on the Orient Express. And mm. uh, it was a remake. I've never heard of it before. And it has Daisy Ridley in it. And that's honestly enough reason for me to put it in my top 10 because I love her so much. She's a wonderful actress. And Josh Gad's going to be in that too. So we'll see how that works out. Apparently. So it, I, I, I want to get down with a good mystery. So hopefully this film is really good. Um, Again, I don't know super a lot about it, but I also wanted to pick something that might not be the typical blockbuster and, and have it on my list. Fair enough. All right, my number nine is a film that the first one surprised me, the second one, which is kind of a spinoff, I'm looking forward to seeing, that's the Lego Batman movie. I loved the Lego movie for what it was. It was a heartfelt little, imaginative, beautifully animated film. And to see what they can do with Batman, seeing what they can do with the whole story and idea of the character, I'm intrigued to see what they can do. And at the time of this recording, it is out. I have not gotten the chance to see it. It's getting good reviews, so we'll see how I personally think about it. I'm not a huge fan of the trailer myself, or all the trailers, but it, it, apparently it's spoof comedy actually done well, and the animation is obviously the fantastic Lego animation from the Lego movie. I love the Lego movie quite a lot. I think a lot of us do. Um, but yeah, and it's probably still out in theaters, or at least some theaters by the time this episode goes up as well. Um, I'm not entirely sure about that, but it might be. Um, so, Lego Batman movie has your, at least, anticipatory recommendation from Zach. I agree. Yeah, Good, yeah. We were, we were recording this, I was like, yeah, this episode might come out a couple months, like, into 2017. Do you have any January or February movies? And you were like, one. And I was like, oh, shit. One. The Lego Batman movie, isn't it? It is. John Wick 2 was close. John Wick 2 was really close. Which I also heard is getting pretty good reviews, so go see those, and mm -hmm. not Fifty Shades Darker if that's still out for some reason. 
anyway, no, just just off of the uh, these depressing topics. Um, my number nine is not really a pick I've thought a lot about, but uh, it's Saw Legacy. I've actually seen every single Saw film, and they're not as bad as you would actually imagine. In fact, the first uh, two or three are honestly really, really good, in my opinion. They're very deep and complex, and you got to be on your toes thinking, as well as like revolting at the uh, the horror on screen. So it's uh, not these films aren't for everybody. And um, while I didn't really like a lot of the later films in the franchise, it sort of felt like a lot of the plot elements were contrived. Apparently, whatever this film is, whether it's a sequel or a midquill or, or something, apparently the writers and directors are trying to retool the soft formula and sort of make it fresh and um, quality again. So if we can get a good horror movie out of that, I'm pretty excited. That honestly surprises me that a film like Saw Legacy would be on your list. I didn't, I didn't yeah. peg you as a Saw fan. That's interesting to me. Much no, like I seriously thought those films had to just suck before I saw them, and then I saw the first one and I loved it. And I was like, "Wow, I really gave these movies a bad rap just because I see these trailers and I think I know what they are, but you really don't unless you actually see them." Fair enough. I enjoy the first one. The rest of them were kind of okay to me, but that's interesting that it makes your list. There's varying levels of quality. I won't. I won't. Um, yeah. that, that's for sure. But I, I'm hoping maybe that seeing this rise in horror that we sort of got in 2016 will get another good film out of the genre. So, cr crossing my fingers, it could suck. It could suck. Absolutely. <laughs> Speaking of movies that could suck, <laughs> my number eight. This, this, is the only, this is the last movie I think has, unfortunately, the ability to suck. I okay. don't want it to. I want the best for this movie, and that's Wonder Woman. So, okay. Spoiler alert, Justice League is not on my list. I have had it with DCEU Zack Snyder movies. I have no faith in the dude. I'll yeah. probably end up seeing it. It did not make my list. But what I've seen from Wonder Woman, it could just be another great trailer. But what I've seen from it, the action is different. It's almost the DCEU's Captain America. It yeah. takes place before everything else. I enjoyed Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman in Batman vs. Superman. I think she was one of the best parts. So I'm intrigued to see what she can do with her own movie and to see if this can right the ship for the DC Cinematic Universe. Yeah, that'll absolutely be interesting to see. Um, my number eight is also a film that I think could suck, absolutely, which is Justice League. <laughs> Fair enough. And I put it on my list is that it, it's not that I have... I'm a bigger fan of Zack Snyder than you are, but I'm also not a fan of some of his films. Um, I think a couple of his films are really, really good. I think some of his films are just like, what are you doing, man? Um, hmm. But the reason I'm excited for it, even if it does end up sucking, which is a very, very real possibility, because Dawn of Justice disappointed me, is that we are actually going to see the Justice League on screen, like on the movie screen. And honestly, on virtue of that alone... That is exciting enough to at least warrant a spot on the list. I mean, I'm not having it super high. Um, there are a couple superhero films that don't even make it on my list that will you'll find out what those are later. Um, mm -hmm. Justice League could be the worst of the year in terms of superheroes, but it, it it could have potential. Like the elements are there. The same with Batman v Superman. Like you have the elements. Just please don't write a shitty plot. Um, don't don't contrive the story into something that is unnecessary. Just I don't know. Sort of follow the Avengers lead, but also do something different. And I think it could be good, but I'm not holding my breath. Yeah, I want it to be good. I just don't have much faith in it. Yeah, I mean, I want all of these films to be good. That's why we we do this. Absolutely. Keeping with superheroes, my number seven is Spider-Man: Homecoming. Going back to Civil War, seeing how they introduced Spider-Man into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I think it was beautifully done. I want to see what Tom Holland can do in his own movie. I want to see how Marvel and Sony can collaborate on a film and see how that works. Michael Keaton as the villain has me intrigued. And from what I understand, they watched a lot of John Hughes-style movies, the classic 80s Ferris Bueller, Breakfast Club kind of movies, as inspiration for this film. I want to see what that can look like in tune with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. Well, I have a, 
a funny observation at this point about Michael Keaton. It seems like Hollywood's running joke of late to continue making Michael Keaton a flying person. Yeah, Batman and then Birdman, and now ironically, he is the vulture. I mean, come on, like there is no way they're not doing this on purpose, and I find that really funny on like a meta level. So I just had to put that. Out. You either play the hero or live long enough to play the villain. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, honestly, I'm gonna spoil this right now. Spider-Man: Homecoming is not on my list because I just I feel like it's too much Spider-Man and too soon. Um, I like four of the five Spider-Man movies that we have. Obviously, Spider-Man 3 is the one I don't like, because that's not that great. Um, I really love Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. I love even more Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, which is an unpopular opinion, I'm pretty sure. Um, I felt like the chemistry with the characters in the Amazing Spider-Man films was really good. They cut that franchise off short. I'm still a little jaded about that. I'm not the hugest fan of Tom Holland. I thought he did well in Civil War. I'm not sure about maintaining an entire flick. And I actually don't want the whole John Hughes type thing to be the whole movie. I uh, I just feel like they're trying too hard to make this its own like subgenre in the superhero. Front. I don't know. The trailers make me cringe a little bit, honestly. Um, I want it to be good, again. But I have a feeling this Spider-Man won't do it for me. Fair enough. All right. Um... My number seven, yeah, continuing with superheroes, and literally one you just mentioned is Wonder Woman. Um, All right. So we're not that far off on that. Um, I really want a badass um, female superhero to lead a movie finally, and if this sucks, that will really suck for you know that possibility because there are so many great female characters, and it's sort of weird that we haven't gotten that until 2017. It's a little bizarre, but there are things to be excited about. The trailers look pretty good. Then again. What's preventing me from putting this higher on the list is that I thought the trailers for Dawn of Justice, for the most part, and Suicide Squad looked pretty great. And they mm -hmm. disappointed me hard. So, like, Wonder Woman could absolutely be the same case. Or worse, or better, I don't know. I don't want to think about it anymore. I just want to see what DC does. Obviously, I'm a sheep. We're going to see these superhero movies. Um, we're going to you know, talk about them no matter what. Um, so, if we're already going to do that, could they please be really good? Yeah. We're in the superhero renaissance. Just make sure there's not a couple pieces of crap in there like there has been. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping with superheroes. <laughs> yeah, I know. My number six is Thor Ragnarok. Now, this is a movie that we haven't seen a trailer for yet, so you might be thinking, why is this higher than movies that we've seen trailers for? The fact that they're adding Hulk into this movie, the fact that Doctor Strange is going to be in this movie, the fact that this is an off-world buddy cop style film that's going to be putting the Hulk and Thor into situations that we haven't before in an extraterrestrial kind of place from a creative director, Taika Watiti, which I think that's just an amazing name, so I'm just... Happy to say that again. <laughs> Seeing what he can do in this universe, I'm intrigued. Because Thor, when if I look at all the movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Thor movies are the weakest to me. So to see what they can do with Ragnarok is really intriguing to me, and I want it to be really, really good. I have two things to say. One, Thor Ragnarok is also not on my list. Um, I think it has potential. I think it probably will be at least good. Um, shoehorning Hulk, like, I don't know if it's shoehorning, if it's actual written, they intended it all along, but it has Hulk and Doctor Strange, and from Age of Ultron, I was under the impression it was going to be super freaking dark, but now it's like a buddy cop film, so I don't understand how that could be. So I'm scared if its tone is conflicting, I'm scared if it's another, like you said, somewhat forgettable Thor movie. Um, and then the second thing I have to say is, I think, other than Iron Man 1, the Iron Man movies are the weakest link in the MCU. Fair um, enough. But we'll just see what our viewers think. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Um, then that's me again. Mm -hmm. Number six is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Ooh. Okay. All right. So we're finally into superhero territory where I'm pretty sure it won't suck. Pretty sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love the first Guardians of the Galaxy. You love it, too. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite MCU movies. And it's probably just one of my favorite superhero movies in general. Uh, it was such a fresh, fun, 
ensemble flick. The adventure never stopped. The pace never stopped. Looking at the trailers, it doesn't seem like any of that would not return um, for this film, the sequel. Um, so I'm pretty excited about it. I've actually tried to dabble a little bit in the comics lately because I just love the characters so much, and it seems like they're just being very super faithful to it again. And uh, I don't know, it seems funny. And I, if we get some really cl uh, awesome classic music again in the collection, there'll be another cherry on the on top. But uh, I'm I'm really excited for this, and it's my birthday movie, so it better be good. And that's that's a great day for me, a birthday movie. My. I remember past birthday movies for me. The one I remember the most was Grown Ups, and that was just... Oof. Wait, when's your birthday? Uh, June 25th. Oh, okay. No, that's not even that bad of a date. Like, that's a summer date. No, it's not. <laughs> it's just I've gotten a lot of crap on my birthday, which isn't cool. But uh, yeah, last All right. And you're screwed. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> All right, um, getting away from superhero movies, my, my number five is War for the Planet of the Apes. Oh my god, that's my number five. Hey, what do you look at that? That works. So the first, Rise of the Planet of the Apes and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes are two of the most interesting sci-fi films that I've seen in a while. Andy Serkis as Caesar is simply amazing, right up there with his performance as Gollum, if we're talking motion capture. I want to see Woody Harrelson do very well in this movie. I think he's a good pick for a general type character. I want to see the actual war that's been building for two films. And I want to, I want it to pay off. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, if it continues doing what Rise and Dawn did, <clears throat> this movie shouldn't fail. It really shouldn't. This should be one of the strongest movie trilogies we've gotten in a while, for sure. I mean, mm -hmm. I love these first two films. I, I really do. And I cannot wait to rewatch them in preparation for this film in July. Um, I don't know. I, I really want to see how this story connects. I, I believe this is the end of it all. So how it connects to the actual Planet of the Apes and mm -hmm. everything. I mean, this is, like you said, what it's been building toward. It's probably going to be more action-packed uh, in, in terms of that. My only hope is that it's, it's equally as dramatic as the other one as well. So, I mean, if it, if it does all of those things... This movie is probably going to be one of the best of the year. I'm really hyped for it. Absolutely. And that that was interesting that we tied on that one. Yeah. That doesn't happen often. No, I mean, it, it happened once in our last video. But if you haven't checked that out, you'll have to, you'll have to see where. Flashback. All right. Anyway, so my number four is Beauty and the Beast. Okay. A film that came out last year was Jungle Book. And what they did converting a classic 2D animated Disney film to a live action worked beautifully. Everything I've seen from Beauty and the Beast puts me in the right boat. The, this cast might be the best cast that we've had and perfectly well casted in forever. Emma Watson, Sir Ian McKellen, Ewan McGregor, Luke Evans, Josh Gad. Everyone is just perfect in the roles they were cast. They should balance the music properly. It looks beautiful. The Beast looks pretty dang good, in my opinion. The only thing I would comment is his horns are a little bit long, but that's just me. Yeah, everyone hates everything, yeah, everything I've seen from this makes me really look forward to it, and it is my highest official Disney film of this year. Yeah. Um, it's not on my list, but I totally see where you're coming from on that one. Um, I don't know. If this film happens to be better than the original animated film, then bam, take take what I'm about to say for nothing. However, <laughs> as it is, we have a wonderful, I'm, I haven't seen it in a while, but a wonderful version of Beauty and the Beast already. There's parts of me that feel like this movie is unnecessary. That's not going to stop Disney. It's probably going to be a quality movie, um, but if it doesn't surpass the original, I mean, like that's what made Jungle Book um, so exciting for me, is that I thought it surpassed the original uh, animated film, but we will we will see. Um, I think it has a great cast as well, and uh, I think I probably will see it. I mean, I'm a huge Emma Watson fan, and uh, like I pretty much agree with everything else you said. So I'd be surprised if this got poor reviews. So absolutely. All right, my number four is a film that I honestly don't know much about. I don't know much about the story. It's uh, it's an original um, film adaptation of a book. Stephen King book, and usually Stephen King's works translate very well, or very poorly, 
to the silver screen, but it is the Dark Tower, which was mm-hmm. supposed to come out like now, but I think it got postponed to the summer. Um, and I honestly don't even know too much about this story. But it, Stephen King, um, say what you will, he's had some weird projects here and there, but he's also a fairly good writer, and he considers this his magnum opus. And now it's going to be translated to silver screen with Idris Elba and Matthew McConaughey among the talent. I mean, that seems like a pretty good combination. And I'm a huge fantasy guy, and this is a really high fantasy, supreme sort of epic story. Um, so whatever that turns out to be, I really, really want it to be good. So I cannot wait for this. I, I don't even want to know hardly anything about it. So I, I want it to surprise me and give me a new tale of fantasy that hopefully I can get into. So I am, I'm more intrigued about that movie than I am anticipated, but it is very interesting to see because they've been trying to get this movie made for years. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I hope they do it well, and I hope that – I've heard such an amazing book it is, and it's actually a series of books, so it'll be interesting yeah. to see what they do with that. It'll be interesting to see if it's, it's good enough to warrant a franchise, yeah. Yeah. All right. My number three film anticipated is Star Wars The Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. Now, we haven't seen anything from this movie. We just got the announcement a few weeks back of what it was officially going to be titled. The speculation is so huge on this movie. The anticipation is so huge on this movie. After The Force Awakens, which I would say is my third favorite Star Wars movie, I'd go Empire, the original Force Awakens. Yeah, it's I actually- love the characters. Empire Return, Force Awakens. Yeah. I love the characters. I'd love to see what Rey is going to be doing in this movie. The fact If we get to see Luke Skywalker light up a lightsaber and fight again, I'm going to get emotional. Yeah, I think it's probably a safe bet. Yeah, and especially with the disastrous passing of Carrie Fisher, seeing her as Princess Leia one more time, it's going to be an emotional movie yeah. that I cannot possibly imagine being bad at this point. Yeah, oh, I would be shocked beyond belief and deeply saddened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we know how much I love Star Wars. Let's not kid ourselves. We'll be talking about it later. Um, yeah, we will. Now, my number three is my most highly anticipated superhero film of the year. And that is actually the one that comes out first. And that is Logan. I think Logan has so much promise. Finally, we're getting past the the awkward Wolverine spinoff movies into one that I think is actually going to come into its own. X-Men Origins Wolverine, not that good, sort of fun to watch. The Wolverine, I think, is an underrated film. I like it quite a bit, but it's not spectacular, and it's not the best X-Men movie. But finally, we're going to see Hugh Jackman off as the Wolverine after 17 years of playing the character. And this movie is rated R. They're not holding back on what the character is not holding back on the story. It seems like everything that's going on in these trailers I really, really like. I think the movie's gonna make me feel things. I and I don't I don't really see that many sort of tropes um, that this movie can fall into. If anything, it reminds me of um, Metal Gear Solid with its amazing sort of villainous type characters lurking around and it reminds me of The Last of Us with the combination of a of an old man and a young girl. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what they're doing. Um, but those are hardly complaints because I love those video games. So maybe Logan will be the best best video game movie we'll ever get. The best video game movie that's not a video game movie. And I'm going to echo everything you just said because Logan is my number two. Oh, okay. And adding on to what you said of the R rating, which is what we've always, I think, always needed for the character and why the other solo films don't work perfectly yeah. The addition of X-23 being added as a new element. And this isn't only the last time we're supposedly going to see Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. I mean, if Ryan Reynolds convinces him to be in Deadpool 2. I'm not holding my breath, but I mean, this I hold my breath. last solo endeavor. This is his, might be his last time carrying a film. Yeah, this will also be the last time we see Patrick Stewart as Professor X. Oh. Which, in, which in and of itself is another level of emotion that's just breaking me down. But I think this is everything we're ever going to want in a Wolverine movie and in the best way to see Hugh Jackman out. I hope so. And it, it's like out now as uh, the time this episode is out, I think. Um, so, yeah, go see this. I, 
this is definitely my most anticipated superhero film because I feel like it could be the most different and hopefully the most exciting and gut-wrenching. So yeah, that's your number two. We play that's that my better. number two. Awesome. My number two is a film from my favorite director, and that is Dunkirk. My favorite director is Christopher Nolan. To me, he has never made a bad movie, not even close. That being said, I have a few worries about Dunkirk because I feel like it's a little tame for Christopher Nolan at this point to take on a war film. I think his mind is just so much larger than that. But that being said, this he could execute one of the greatest war films ever made. I don't even know. Um, the trailers have me interested. And honestly, just the fact that it's Nolan's next movie after Interstellar and Inception and The Dark Knight, some of my literal favorite films of all time. I, I mean, that's really all I need to know to be extremely excited for it. I had a feeling Dunkirk was going to be pretty high on your list, knowing how much of a Christopher Nolan fan you are. I'm not a huge fan of Interstellar, but I echo everything else you said. One of that's my, just me. I think it's my favorite film of this century so far. Ever. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's a huge claim. Yeah. That's a that's that's big. I am looking forward to Dunkirk. I just feel that the idea that you said that this isn't big enough for him is why it's not on my list. Yes. Because I feel like he could be doing bigger, more interesting, more dynamic things I mean, than a war why film. I'm a little worried too, because maybe he doesn't know what to do with himself. With I mean, he obviously picked this project though, so then I'm like, no, you're being stupid. It's probably gonna be great, but. That's why I have a little bit of worry. I mean, you go from the prestige, like you go from, you go from magic, you go from like suspense thrillers of his first movies. You go from that to magic, and then the greatest superhero of all time, and then you go to dreams, and then you go to space travel, and then you go back to World War II. It's like it seems like a ramp, and we just like went, took a dip. Yeah. That being said, it could still be, yeah, fantastic. See, it very well could be. And my number one most anticipated movie, the Emoji Movie, Express Yourself. I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm not psychotic. I instantly knew you were kidding. It's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Nice. Nice. All right. Everything I've seen from this movie, from the Super Bowl spot to the images to the trailer to the fact that I just saw a report that it scored 100 out of 100 in a test screening. Yeah. which is one of the most difficult things for a film to do. I love Guardians. Everything I'm seeing about this movie has me absolutely pumped. The fact that it's more anticipated for me than Star Wars is a huge thing for me because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Yeah. And the fact that this is going to connect into Avengers Infinity War since the Guardians are going to be involved in that, mm. there is no single movie I'm looking forward to more in 2017 than Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. That makes a lot of sense for you, sir. And I am also super excited for it. I mean, this is probably going to be the best part of turning 21. <laughs> and that's saying how excited I am for this movie, too. I mean, sci-fi is strong. Um, but you know what else is strong, Zach? The Force? The Force is very, very strong. And uh, if you came into this video not thinking Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi was not going to be my number one just on plain virtue of it being Star Wars and, and the next episode, no less, then you don't know me at all. Um, so yeah, that's my, that's my number one. I mean, as you said, there's something about Star Wars. I mean, other franchises do it too, but there's something about Star Wars that so many people latch onto in terms of just speculation, especially after The Force Awakens and how much we talk about, oh, this would re be really cool but I hope they don't do this. That would ruin it. And we've been doing that for over a year now. And mm -hmm. like you said, we, did, we just have the title, which we recently got um, a few weeks ago, um, over a month ago, by the time people watch this. But, oh my gosh, I'm ready for Star Wars to just sort of consume me again, blow my mind. I rewatched Force Awakens, mm -hmm. and it holds up. I still really love it. But everyone knows that movie plays it sort of safe in, in a lot of ways, um, which doesn't really take away from its quality. But I think I from hearing everything that uh, all the press this movie has gotten in terms of its uh, director and its story, it sounds like it's going to be something very new in some way. And mm -hmm. coupled with it already being Star Wars, just the nostalgia 
what we can expect for the future of the franchise. Like, this is the this is going to be the Star Wars movie that sort of defines what Star Wars is capable of in this this current cinema. I I'm so excited. I will probably mm-hmm. cry instantly once the the trailer comes out, and it might be out by now. Um, but yeah, yeah. Speaking speak. Speaking of a trailer, I was posed this question the other day. Would you be okay going into theaters on December 15th to see Star Wars Episode Eight without there being a trailer released at all? How would you feel if they never released a trailer for it, they never released an image for it, you just walked in knowing it was called The Last Jedi, and that was it? I'd be fine with it. I like obviously I would go see it. Um, yeah, I would pr- prefer at least one trailer. And let's be real, that would never ever happen because they want no. to talk about this. And um, for those who aren't rabid Star Wars fans like you and I, um, they need obviously advertising to get maybe even more than five hundred million billion, however many people saw the first the, the Force <laughs> Awakens. So I don't even know. Um, yeah. Really. Yeah, it's honestly just a question of when we're going to get more information at this point, but obviously, literally nothing in this universe can change the fact that I will be seeing this movie. And I said Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is my uh, my birthday film. Episode 8 comes out the weekend I graduate from college. There you go. That week, I'm going to be more excited about Star Wars than graduating from three and a half years of college, so. If that there you go. My hype, I, I don't think I could uh, explain how much more excited I am than that. <laughs> so a couple, just to mention real quick, a couple honorable mentions that yeah, um, that may or may not be good. The Pirates of the Caribbean movies for me are guilty pleasure movies, personally. <laughs> I, know, I know they're not amazing, but the fifth one, I, I like the characters. We'll see how that is. Um, another one, Coco, I'm intrigued by, we talked about that earlier, there's going to be another Cloverfield movie this year, we're not sure what it's going to be called, but there's going to be another Cloverfield movie, we had 10 Cloverfield Lane last year, so I'm intrigued to see what they do with that, Kong Skull, yeah, Kong Skull Island is another one that I'm intrigued by, because they're setting this up so he fights Godzilla in a future movie, so we'll see how that goes. I love Godzilla, mostly because of its human element, so I really hope turn that sort of franchise into a monster free-for-all with no substance, but hopefully it's good. I mean, I'm at least interested. I love yep. giant fighting monsters. Yep. And one more I was going to add on there was Kingsman the Golden Circle. I enjoyed the first Kingsman movie. I'm curious to see what they're going to do. The reason I didn't put it on the list, there's a rumor that there might be a character coming back that didn't make it through the first movie, and I don't think that makes sense. But that was the only thing that kept me up, kept it off the list. Sting. I have not seen the first Kingsman, but I've heard good things about it. So seems like it. highly recommend it. Very cool. Well, those are our top ten 2017 anticipated films. Hopefully, I think our overall sentiment this year is that we don't get disappointed as much as we did last year. So if it's better than 2016, I'll call it a win. Yeah, honestly, and that's not to say 2016 didn't have good films. It's just more often than not, they weren't anywhere in our radar for being anticipated. They were, they, the anticipated ones ended up being disappointed, uh, disappointing a little bit. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, crossing our fingers for uh, this year to be great, and then hopefully we'll get other fantastic stuff like La La Land and Arrival, and et cetera, et cetera, uh, that we don't know about, because sadly... It's hard to get anticipated for those films and excited, but it doesn't make them any less great. Absolutely. All right, Zach, do you have uh, anything else you'd like to say to the viewers before we sign off? I just want to thank you for having me on all these years, having these couple times, coming back every year and doing this. I'm looking forward to seeing some good movies this year. I'm looking forward to hopefully not being dead wrong on any of these. Yeah, that'd be great. There's not going to be a number one Suicide Squad issue here. I really don't think there will be. Well, I mean, if that happens for me, then that means The Last Jedi was bad. And that will probably just kill me. Um, so. oh, 
that would mean Guardians is the worst, and that would just I would I would be done. Yeah. So I feel like our picks are a little better this year. Yeah. Of what we know, I think we we grew smarter in 2016. So with so. age comes wisdom. Exactly. With shitty movies comes more refined taste. Yeah. Tell that to Michael Bay's Transformers movies. Oh yeah, actually, our our mutual number one is Transformers Five: The Last Night. Absolutely, let's go. Yeah, Optimus. <laughs> hey, I'm Mark Wahlberg. Don't you want to help me save the planet? No, didn't think so. Oh, oh God, those movies are out of control at this point. Well, that's it for this episode. Um, meet me back here next Saturday with another guest. Um, but for now, thanks, Zach. And um, do you have anywhere you. people want to follow you for reviews or, or Twitter or anything like that? I'm on Facebook, just at Zach Burkle, Z-A-K-B-U-E-R-K-L-E. When I see a movie that really gets to me, I talk about it on there. And we'll, prob- we'll probably check out a few movies together later this year, so yeah. keep an eye on for that. That's the plan. Yeah, whether we plan it or not, right? Yep, you never know. Awesome. All right, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.